Now, this, this second candle deals with preparation. Now, how does that fit with peace? Now, as I was driving down here today, I thought to myself, now, I'll... I'll that we ought to have a big military, uh, big, 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 big arms, and that through peace with strength that you're able to do things. And in a sense, that kind of ties it together in many respects because in order to have peace, we need to prepare ourselves, as Scripture says, with, with, the, with the shield of righteousness, with, with the, the sword of the, of the, of the Lord, uh, all of those things we speak of strength to give us peace. It sometimes kind of seems to be kind of contradictory. But in this particular week here, we are dealing with preparation. And then the opening, opening text, the text that I uh, evidently butchered a lot, lot, of, lot, of, lot of the Messiah over here by try, trying to sing, sing two solo parts without an accompaniment music. But, uh, and I thought several times about buying, you can buy a CD-ROM or, or an actual audio CD that give, gives you the Messiah accompaniment piece, but... It costs too much, and I, I don't, I don't, I can't sing all of it anyway. And very few ch churches around actually do the Messiah. Uh, like when I used to do, I used to go up to a choir up in up in Winsboro every 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 year, and you get all the churches together and find a church that got a pipe organ, and uh, you have yourself a big big program of the of the Messiah. I have a cousin who usually goes over to uh, they live in Orangeburg. They go to Chaplin College. And Chaplin College often, often, often does the Messiah program, and uh, she always looked forward to doing that as well. And so, so I, I'm, I, I, my apologies to uh, to uh, to Mr. Handel for for butchering those first two solos, but but I, I, it meant a great deal to me that we could actually, I could actually be able to try it, um, and like I said, I had to take it take it way down in pitch from what it was originally written. But that 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 required my preparation. In a sense, I did do a little preparation with it. I have a little tiny keyboard at home. I went to I went to a Family Dollar and bought a keyboard for five dollars. That's pretty good for a keyboard, uh, but it, it only has enough notes on it for a vocal range, and uh, that's just what I need. That's what I bought it for. So when I'm when I'm selecting hymns, I can pull that thing out. If I don't know the hymn already, I can just pick it out on a little keyboard and then I go what the notes are. But see that that's all about preparation. We prepare for things before we're able to do things. The scripture you know, here talk, talks about how that, how that, that, that Jesus, God said, comfort ye my people. And later also said, said that he was preparing the way of the Lord. Make it straight. Make, 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 make it smooth and make it straight. Uh, the, President Obama certainly tr tried to get some, get some programs going through to, to improve our infrastructure. We still have a big need for infrastructure in this state here. We finally got around to, to ra raise, raising the gas tax so we could get more money so as to straighten and flatten our roads. That, that, that's a very important preparation for us in order to be able to have a productive and a, and a, and a, and a safe state. I mean, I, I, I like many of you, I, there are places I know of where when I, when I take a tight turn, I have to make sure I go it real slow because if I take it too fast, my rear end will slide around because it's so bumpy, it's so so uneven, and so the, the, those are places that need to be made straighter and need need to be flatter, and so that that that's what Scripture is talking about also as far as far as that we ourselves ought to be made straighter and smoother, uh, that there, there's there's a need for us to become more holy, and Scripture says as well. Now remember, I've told you before the word holy. I was often misconstrued. Many people think holy means to be perfect, to be pure. But holy actually has to do with being made separated apart. Thus, you have the Holy Bible, and it means a, a special book. Bible being kind of a German, come, come from the German, which means book. And so we have the Holy Bible. It's, it's a, 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 a special book within our lives. It truly is the written word of God. And so we give it special place within our lives. Everybody has at least one translation at home today's days. Uh, there was a time that King James was considered to be the only translation. I remember one time uh, uh, do, doing, some, doing some missionary work in, in some part of Indiana. And I spoke to this minister there. 
And it turned out this minister here was one of the, he was in charge of an organization that, that believed that King James should be the only translation. It was it. There could be nothing else. And, but I didn't know that at the time, and we started talking about translations, and I told him that I was using the New American Version. Oh, man, that got me in trouble. I literally had to run for my life. I mean, I'm not joking. I had, <laughs> that guy got so loud and got, got so screaming, I, I got out and ran down the hall and got back in my truck and took off. And he was a Baptist too, but I didn't. That, that was one Baptist I couldn't get along with. Uh, <laughs> he believed absolutely in the King James Bible. Many of us don't have, have reverence for our Bibles. Sometimes, like I say, for this fellow, had way too much reverence, I think, for his Bible. But, but, um, but that, that's an important thing. The Bible ha has a great Word of God for us. It makes it possible for us to prepare ourselves for being being servants of God for doing his will. Preparation is a major part of our life. And that in itself brings us to revelation. You know, we, we often wonder, sometimes think about to ourselves, uh, how, how do we get to a point of revelation? Uh, there was a speaker at our church today that talked about, talked about first there comes restoration and then revelation. And in a sense, that's very much true with the idea of preparation. For, for, for when we prepare ourselves, when we study the scripture, when we pray to God, then we open ourselves for the possibility of revelation. And that, that, that's what's being talked about, comfort ye, comfort ye my people. And we talked about how the, how the, 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 the man, man was like grass, it withereth away, for the word of God is forever. That's something we, we can always lay, lay our hands upon. And secondly, we're talking in the psalm text about how to be lifted up. We needed to be lifted up. That there, there, was, a, there was a hope in their day and time, a very great hope, that a woman would be, would, be, would be brought about and she would be given the opportunity to bear the Christ child, the Messiah, the anointed one. They would be lifted up. In a very real sense, each of us also pray oftentimes that we be lifted up. How many of you have, has, have experienced a kind of a moment, moment of epiphany, uh, now, a wonderful experience in which you feel the presence of God? I'm sure most of us have at some point in time experienced that, uh, when we were touched by God. Uh, I feel it probably every time that I, uh, you know, you do it yourselves when, when, you, when you sing a song, sing a hymn that touches you specially. That there are certain songs that touch us in a special way. At Christmas time, it might be might be Silent Night, uh, 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 or Angels Heard on High, the uh, Joyful, Joyful, we 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 adore Thee. Uh, certain hymns really touch us in a special way. Uh, pe people, when they th think about uh, uh, think about hymns that really touch them, many people mention Because He Lives. Uh, that that's a special song that means much to them. And everyone knows at least two or three verses of Amazing Grace. Uh, that these are special songs that touch us in a major way. I know myself, whenever I, I, I teach the Word of God, whenever I'm part of, part of preaching, uh, I feel God's presence. I remember a, a, a movie called Chariots of Fire. And Chariots of Fire it was really a story about two men, two athletic runners and uh, one's name was Abrams he was he was a Jewish fellow didn't have very much religion about him but he wanted to be the fastest he had to be the fastest he drove himself constantly to be the fastest and then one day he ran up against another whole, another fellow I can't remember his name from the thing of, but he was a Scotsman and he was uh, uh, his father was a missionary that they had ser served in China and he later went back to China. As the story went, he died. He died uh, just before the end of the World War II. But but he said of his running, he said this to his sister one time. His sister didn't want him to be doing this running business. She wanted him to, to, to be about the mission. The mission was everything to her, and uh, she she pressured him all the time. But she he he got he pulled her to the side one time and told her, according to that movie there, that when I run, I feel God's presence. You know, he, 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 that, that was one of the things in which, which he could do 
and feel God's presence in his life. He was lifted up when he did this. How great it would be if each of us would feel lifted up when we do, when we work, work to work somewhere, feel lifted up when we when when we when we when we did anything. Let, let us do all we do for the glory of God. Wouldn't it be great if we could feel lifted up every time? And I look sometimes and think about what my mother has given to me. For many years, it was just Mama and me. And I think about I, I live in a home now. And she. She used to tell me a lot of times, though, whenever I try to change things around the house, she said, now, when you, when you, you get your own place, and when I die, then you can change things in this house, but not before. So I got to change. I, the backyard was mine. The, uh, the, the workshop I built in the backyard, that was mine. The rest of the house in the front yard was hers. And, uh, and my bedroom is mine. I, I actually allowed, was allowed to do a few things in my own bedroom. But... Um, but mom, that was Mama's house. And now that she's gone, and I look over that house, I, I, I feel Mama's presence. I can see it in, in the house. This was a house that she designed herself. She literally, she, she was a school teacher, so she knew how to use protractor and compass and ruler. And so she, she made out a drawing that was a scale drawing. She wasn't a draftsman. She didn't study how to be a draftsman anywhere, but she made a scale marking. And she took it to, to I think it was Bagnell Builders, took it over to, to, the, to the subcontractor and showed it to him, and they laughed at her. And Mama was really getting kind of upset. What in the world are they laughing about me for? And uh, she, was starting to say, she was starting to get, get all, all upset. And they said, no, 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 Mr. King. We're not laughing at you. We're la laughing at which, which so delight. You gave us a document that all we have to do is just send it to a few other draftsmen to, to fill in the blanks. And you've, most people, they say, send us a, a little rough, rough estimate, a freehand drawing, and that we have to work on it to find out what they really want. But she, she actually drew the diagrams for where all the doors were, all the windows, uh, which way the doors would move, everything. She put it all down in black and white. And I can still see my mama's hand. In that, and when I think on her, I feel lifted up. Sometimes you think about your parents. Sometimes you feel yourselves lifted up. And in the in the in the next piece on on the Second Peter, we deal with the text that teaches patience. Indeed, we we are to be patient and have long suffering. Yeah, oftentimes we 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 fail to be patient. We we always have this this feeling. I, I look at my uh, I look at my, my computer now uses DSL, and I, sometimes I, I I think to myself it's not so slow uh, compared to Spectrum and Roadrunner and that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, but I look at some of the people that have got Spectrum and it's fast. Boy, that's fast. Boy, I just they just click it on and it pops up like that. I can't believe it. Uh, but but I remember dial up. Remember dial up? Boy, I remember how slow that was. You put that thing on and go do. I thought that was amazing considering I'd never had a computer before, so I thought that was pretty good. But after I got, got into dial-up a lot, I got into DSL and now it goes like that. Oh, that's pretty good. That's really good. <laughs> and now you got something even faster. But sometimes we have to be, we have to be patient and, or, or, and not, not be willing things to be, have to be so quick all the time. But I kind of like things being fast. We do like things being fast. We do have a faster lifestyle in our, our world today. Oftentimes, it's too fast for us. And lastly, it talks about repentance. Now, the idea, by the way, of being in holiness is making yourself able to set yourself apart. To be holy, like I said, was to be special, to be set aside. And in order to be able to be willing to set aside, we have to be both patient and have repentance. These things work together because in repentance, we have an experience of turning again. And in fact, when you turn again, when you change your direction in life, you are making yourself holy. You're setting yourself apart from what, what, what everyone else is doing within your life. So as we prepare ourselves for the coming of, of, of the celebration of the coming of the Christ child, we need to look upon ourselves 
and see just how truly patient and repentant we are. Many of the times we're not. We get, we, this is the really rush time of the year. It will get worse as we get further on to, closer to Christmas. I mean, how many of you did, have done all your shopping yet? Yeah, I don't see too many hands going up. Okay. Oh, uh, maybe a little problem there. I've begun thinking about what I'm going to give people. I've begun thinking about that. I got this for that person, that for that person. I might, I might, I might give out magazine subscriptions. That's always good. Yeah, that'll be good. But <laughs> I can make a few clicks on the internet and send, send, take care of several people right there. But, uh, but most of us haven't done that much preparation. We'll have an opportunity to really, really bang those, bang those doors maybe in the last couple of days. I remember actually, actually, actually going doing my last minute shopping, all of my shopping. At a time, almost to the very, very last day, literally Christmas Eve, and start, start hitting the WalMarts in the last minute. Now that's procrastination. That may be a little too much patience. You get my drift. But we need to be patient and have our repentance, and be willing to turn again to make ourselves holy, and prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord, as He shows Himself in Christmas. Let's bow our head for a word of prayer. And then, Father, I do thank you for this opportunity to come together and to, and to, uh... <laughs>